How I take pictures of birds from my home window. Hi, I'm gonna tell you how I take great pictures of beautiful, colorful, tropical birds in my house. In this video, I'm gonna talk about building the set, lighting system, lenses used, camera settings, and general tips. The video should be a reference guide. I describe how I do it within my context for you to adapt the variables according to your particular situation. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna help you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel because more videos will be posted. Also, visit my portfolio at iStock by Getty Images. I am Alejandro Camacho, photo and video exclusive contributor for iStock by Getty Images. I'm located in San Cristobal, Táchira State, Venezuela, in South America, just north of the equator, so I mostly can see birds like blue-gray tanager, thick-billed euphonia, palm tanager, summer tanager, blue-necked tanager, banana quit, tangara girola, red-crowned woodpecker, and pileated woodpecker. This is my dining room panoramic window which has a small garden. In this garden I build a set for the photo sessions. In it I place a bird feeder. The feeder I built is very simple. It's a little wooden board based on the dirt with wood sticks. Also, I glue a dry falling tree branch on it. So the images look very natural with the animals standing on that tree branch. I also place other falling tree branches surrounding the bird feeder. Now, for illumination, I use LED continuous light reflectors on the stands. These feel the light on the birds because the outside natural light is hard and acts as a strong backlight. They are placed in front and on the sides of the possible locations of the birds on the dry plant branches placed on the set. For many years I fed birds with bananas twice every day. I can enjoy birds without having them in captivity. After a while, I could realize that it was a wonderful opportunity to take pictures of birds, and I began my experiment, which has been improving in time. Before I begin shooting, I studied birds' behavior and flight paths in order to know where I can spot them, either flying or standing. I have to make it clear, I do not use flash guns because the beam scares the birds off. For the shoot, I wear dark clothes and hide behind the light stands at about 170 meters, approximately five and a half feet, and put on a dark towel on me and the camera to avoid the animals from seeing my movements. I place the camera on a tripod with an angle of about 45 degrees from the bird's possible locations while eating or waiting for their turn to eat. For birds standing close-ups photography, I use a full-frame DSLR, a 7200mm zoom lens 2.8, a 2x extender, a tripod, a shutter release with cable or remote, six or eight LED reflectors on the stands, a simple and open bird feeder, dry tree branches, banana, dark clothes, and a dark towel. These are images taken with a 70 200 millimeters zoom lens at 200 leaving negative space for copy that are needed for advertising or stock photos. These birds are standing on top of the bird feeder. I always, always, try to get the animals focused tack char on the nearest eye. So I use the AF area in single point spot with automatic focus with old servo continuous driving mode for the moving target. I think this is key. You see, these birds are standing on the dry tree branches 
placed surrounding the bird feeder. Here I use the 2x extender at 400 millimeters. Now, for birds flying photography, I use a full frame DSLR camera, a 100 millimeters 2.8 macro prime lens, a tripod, shutter release with cable or remote, a LED reflectors on the stands, a simple and open bird feeder, dry tree branches, banana, and dark clothes. I start by mirroring with a bright colored decoration fruit and manually refocusing on the bird's most common flight paths. With those settings selected, I hide behind the light stands waiting for the birds to approach in order to trigger the release with multiple continuous shooting, taking as many photos as I can. One of those many pictures can be tack sharp on one of the eyes of the animal. Watch this. They massively keep coming to it. I repeat the process over and over again. Later, I review in the computer which are good in focus. Also, I have to be ready because there can be a special moments for unique photo opportunities. Take a look at this. Things undoubtedly needed for these photo sessions are patience to take hundreds of photos, knowledge of birds behavior, practice to learn and make corrections on the way. If needed, use cropping for composition later, and most of all, passion. I'll tell you, I enjoy every minute of these shoots. I do not get tired, bored, or lose my patience, and every time I take new pictures, I get better and more interesting images. The experience becomes a satisfying learning curve. Now, please enjoy the next photo series with the camera settings for each one. Notice that for action photos I use a shutter speed of at least 1 3200th of a second and balance the exposition with high ISO. Also, I set the aperture at at least f8 in order to have some depth of feel and more opportunity to get the bird in focus. For birds standing close-ups, I try to keep a low ISO. And within a set of pictures, there is always at least one sharply focused image with a speed of 1 200th of a second at 200 millimeters or 1 400th of a second at 400 millimeters. I play with the aperture depending upon what I want in the image. If I want just one of the bird's eye in focus, I use f2.8 through f 5.6. But if I want the body of the bird with some degree of focus, I use an aperture of at least f8 up to f11. Those are eternal, tangless pictures. There isn't any hairstyle or clothes that go out of fashion. You can proudly hang them on your home walls or at someone else's house. I hope you liked it and will serve you well for your next shoot. Thanks for watching. Bye.